Voices from the Mausoleum is brought to you by the You Run Podcast Network and yourunpodcast.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode on Voices from the Mausoleum, and I am not Angel. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> no, it's been fun. What do you um, mean? So Angel has not done her influential horror, so she asked me if I would like to guest host grill her um <laughs> and that's it find out about angel's history as a horror fan and uh what her five most influential horror films are and i gotta say as much as i know about you there were ones on this list that i was not prepared to see yeah two of them are well so okay so technically i did one back when i had like five subscribers but the series has been going on for years at this point, and there's been a lot of changes in the way I view influential horror because essentially before it ended up just being a list of my favorite movies. And while that absolutely works, that's fine. It was more about trying to find something that I connected with or that was meaningful to me and then just kind of reevaluating it. And so, you know, here we are. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, I was like, all right, I have a pretty good idea what this list is going to look like. And I did not. So... <laughs> Okay, like, when we get to when we get to those, you'll have to tell me which ones it was that threw you off. <laughs> I will. I still I didn't get a chance to watch one of them. That's okay. Um, it's not like a spoiler discussion, so that's okay. Yeah, no. Um, all right. So tell us about your history with horror. <laughs> all of it in general as a genre. Yes. Um yeah, I think I, I talk about this often. So it's it's interesting because I've have um, I have siblings that are old enough to be my my parent. Like I'm I'm I was always the young 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 sibling, and I had you know siblings that had kids with the same age as me because we were growing up together. But so I was always the baby. And uh, when I I assume I was three or four, considering I can still remember this, but I remember being shown the original Poltergeist film, which at the time was very scary, like very scary. And I remember like, it's funny because when I think about it, I can picture certain moments in front of the TV because I can still remember that ugly like cabinet we had. And because this was back at like the end of, this is in the nineties, early nineties. And um, yeah. so we're, you know, the eighties hadn't really gone away yet. You know what I mean? And, um, and I remember like watching it. And then I remember my siblings getting in trouble for showing it to me because I was too young <laughs> to see it. And uh, it was very scary. Yeah, bad influences. Um, but it was very scary. And so, but it kind of jump started this uh, this horror love. And then it really didn't blossom, I think, until, you know, I was a little bit older. My dad, my dad's like a like a huge sci-fi fan. So like I grew up on cheesy sci-fi, cheesy horror movies. You know, he showed me things like um, you know, Star Trek. I grew up watching Planet of the Apes, you know, which is I love playing at the Apes. Um, and um, but it included uh, stuff that was in the horror genre as well, stuff like um, the uh, original like Universal Monsters, um, and some of the like Stephen King stuff because the sci fi channel I don't know if they still do or not, but they used to do mini series month in March, and so that was when you got to see like the it, the it series and the shining because they were too long to show as like regular movies. Yeah. Um, so they did them as like mini series and they would take up like chunks of the day. Um, but it's like, you know, so I, I kind of, it kind of became this thing, you know, that I did with my dad. And then as I got older, one of my older sisters became like the one that got me into, like really started taking me to see stuff in theaters, even though I wasn't old enough, um, renting stuff from Blockbuster, um, or movie gallery or whatever the other ones were. And, uh, and it just ended up becoming this thing that like, bonded me with people that were important to me and, and my dad and I to this day still watch more of the sci-fi stuff so like you know this weekend he's gonna go with us I think to go see Godzilla and Kong and um you know like that kind of stuff not this not the horror horror I tried to get him to watch the monster project by the way and I almost disowned him like it came so close like he hated it absolutely hated it he was like oh, trying no. to fast forward it and I was like I swear to God I will end you stop it <laughs> um but yeah, so it just turned it turned from this thing of like intrigue to it just was something I did with people I cared about um, up until I got into an adult when I do a lot of it by myself because I don't have a lot of people in my my everyday life that are into horror like I am. But yeah, that's kind of what jump started it all. Poltergeist, really, and then Planet of the Apes. <laughs> we 
which is a movie that you don't really hear come up very often in that conversation. <laughs> well, it was a series. It was a TV show. <laughs> it was a TV show. And oh um, I think I'm pretty sure it was a TV show too. But yeah, like we watched it all. And I was like, this is, this is good stuff, you know? And yeah. um yeah, I was. That was what I was mostly expecting to see on this list was Poltergeist because of that whole story and like the tattoo you got and everything, which yeah. most people have seen by now. I would hope he's got to be upside um, down because I don't have a sense of direction. <laughs> if I do well, it you know, that way, all you see is the Wendigo. You can't even see. Yeah, it's hard um, to like contort yourself. Yeah, and all that nonsense. Um. <laughs> so your number one most influential horror movie ever. Um, tell us all about it and why it's Sky Sharks. <laughs> Strictly because it annoys the shit out of you. <laughs> I'm really thinking about rewatching it. I, I'm, I, I'm tempted. <laughs> I, I, I will tell you this. I, every time that movie comes up in conversation, which it surprisingly comes up a lot, I always laugh thinking about it. Like, for because of like our conversations and like you messaging me when you were watching it and then the episode that we did on it. And it's just so funny. Like, it's just so funny. And it's, I recommend it highly. Cause I'm like, no, seriously, like you gotta see this movie. It's like, you know, it, it sounds like made up, like something in something else that doesn't actually exist, but like it does. It, it's great. It's such a great movie. Oh, it it does exist. The question is, should it? Is the uh... yes. Listen, if all those other like crazy, silly shark movies can exist, this one can exist. I know. I did watch Shark Side of the Moon a couple of weeks ago. So <laughs> there's the hat. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. So the first one that you sent me on your list was Frankenstein. So are you talking like OG? Yeah. Black and white. Yeah. The from the 30s. 31, I believe. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm a big Frankenstein fan. I, uh, I don't know, you can't see my figurine, but Steve got me a figurine for Christmas is right there. Next to him is the Wolfman. He's a little more obvious to see. I can see the Is it because Frankenstein's, Frankenstein's laying down? Oh, that's not Wolfman. That is Frankenstein. Wolfman's laying down. I can't tell from here. Um, you can just see the word Frankenstein over your head from the movie poster. Yeah, that's because of that big, that big green poster. Um, yeah, so... Frankenstein is technically sci-fi for a lot. Like, like when you think about Mary Shelley, the person who wrote Frankenstein, is she we like, oh, she's the godmother of sci-fi. And she is. And he is essentially a sci-fi character. But when they did the film adaptation and then the the just the change of traje trajectory over the however long, um, you know, Frankenstein has become a horror icon. And, um, but the biggest reason for me is I'm super into monster movies. Like, I love monster movies. Alien monsters, Bigfoot cryptid type, type monsters, weird reg random ass monsters, Godzilla. Like, anything that falls under the category of monsters, I'm, like, there. And I have so much fun with monster movies. And this was the one that kind of started that because the Frankenstein is, is such an interesting take on a monster in the sense of like, you get these really cool moments with him in the film where he like is, there's these, uh, I guess like these elements of humanity. And then there's like, you know, like the, there's the scene with the flower where he has the flower from the little girl and you're like, oh, cute. But then he like, picks up the little girl and throws her in the water and she, and she drowns. And you're just like, oh no. Like there are these moments where like this push and pull between, you know, humanity and not, and non, non humanity or whatever the opposite of that is, is like, I remember that like hitting me so hard. Cause like one of my favorite tropes is monsters aren't the bad guys. I love that. Like, I love when the monsters aren't the bad guys, like Nightbreed is like that. The monsters are the good guys. And the humans are the bad guys. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And anyway, yeah. so it was like the first, the first one of the original Universal Monster movies my dad showed me. 
So it was my introduction to Universal Monsters, but it was really the movie that cemented my love for monster movies, which takes me into so many other films that I love that either I just are either meaningful or just are really, really, really great movies that I can't stop talking about, like The Monster Project or, you know, other things like that. Um, and it just kind of was the one that started all of that. That makes sense. And I, I know I kind of, I feel like some adaptations of it kind of take some liberties with the ending and stuff like that. But I, yeah. I like when the theme pops up, like how human are humans really? And, you know, kind of like yeah. you said, like, who is the real monster? Mm -hmm. Because I mean, we all know people suck. So what's yeah. To see like, especially more extreme versions of that, like yeah, where there is something that is, you know, clearly a monster here. Right. And, not so clearly a monster here. And then they're the ones that are. Yeah. Awful. And in the novel, you know, I, which full disclosure, I have not read in its entirety. I have read a lot of it, but I have not read the whole thing. And, but it, the themes, there's a lot of themes regarding like the soul and what it means to have one. And there's just these like really cool things that it, for it to come across as such a, simple thing like i think you know when frankenstein as a as a movie was advertised it was advertised as this very like basic concept but it's really not that basic and there really is a lot of layers to it oh god especially when you get to like bride of frankenstein that's like bisexual energy like all day it's, it's so it's got so many things going on with it um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those where, yeah, I, I really like the question of like, and then that whole thing of like fear and what fear represents in humans and how humans are so willing to destroy things they don't understand just because they don't understand them. But then yeah. also towing that line of like, yeah, but sometimes the things that you don't understand are dangerous. So when is it okay to persecute versus try to understand? And it, it, it's, it's quite political, I think, if you were to like watch it and, and tone of today but yeah no it's and it's a great film like i found a version of it and i i cannot recommend this enough if i remember i'll put it in the description for the link because i think it's on i watched it on a streaming service or something there somebody took the movie frankenstein which was a quiet super quiet film because it's um they talk in it but it's you know what i mean it's like there's it's not like it it's not like films are that are made now um like you can hear the crackle and the popping of like the film and all that but somebody took it and put music to it but it's by some orchestra or something. And it made it like, I rewatched it when Scott and I covered it for um, Voices in You Run. And um, God, it just made it like, I don't know. It just made it hit harder. It was so good. But if you can find the version of it that's to music, I highly recommend watching that one because there's just something about the music that just like amps up all the shit that you're feeling when you're watching it. It's good. Well, that sounds like it. I mean, and we all know how good it's, really decent soundtrack and no movie, shit so. like yeah. the difference of between life and death yeah oh no, you walk away and that's like the only thing you remember is yes yeah. and i do need to i lied there's actually two movies on here i haven't seen because this is one of them i need to see all the original universal monsters oh yeah you um, do that you can do, skip some but a lot of them are really good <laughs> <laughs> i do think too like because so many of the themes in Frankenstein are so relevant. Like that's why it's so easy for them to adapt it and update it yeah. to like current time because mm -hmm. it's just, they're constantly like humans don't learn. We don't learn anything. God, no. Like we will yeah. forever continue to make the same mistakes. So there will forever be motivation for new Frankenstein movies. That's true. Del Toro is working on one now, I think. Oh, is he? Mm-hmm. And then oh, we've got, I forget who it is that's doing the Wolfman. Um, it was Ryan Gosling. Is it still him? Perhaps. I can't remember. Really? But, uh, yeah. I watched that. But Andrew Garfield is supposed to be in the Frankenstein movie, and so is Mia Goth. And uh, oh, there's another big person. I can't remember who it is. But anyway, but yeah, it's, it's supposed to be in the works. I mean, and if anybody should be doing monster movies, it's Del Toro. So we'll see. Yeah. That's somebody oh, I, I am would really try. excited for uh Nosferatu this year. Oh yes. I can't wait. My husband in it. Um <laughs> just uh, 
<laughs> the next one, obviously, we are both familiar with your love of found footage. So obviously, Blair Witch made the list. Yeah. I one in forever, I will say. Like, I have seen it, but it's been a really, really long time. You know what, man, as much as I love it and as much as I respect it, I don't revisit it that often. Um, He's the Hawks, man. But yeah, yeah, the Blair Witch is, you know, when I do my top list and my recommendations and all that shit for found footage, I don't ever include the Blair Witch because I feel like it's a duh, right? But when you're talking about films that influenced me and my love of horror, I mean, you know, I saw the Blair, I didn't see the Blair Witch until it was already like 10 years old. I was pretty, we were pretty young when it came out. Um, so by the time I saw it, you know, the magic of the advertisement and the the promotional marketing stuff and people really wondering, like, like some, I saw somebody post one time, they're like, no one ever thought this was real. And I was like, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Um, there were people who really thought it was real. And I think like all of that, by the time I got to it was all gone. So I didn't get to experience, but a lot of that was because of my age. Um, I was nine or 10 when it came out. There's no way. Um, but I, uh, but when I did finally watch it, I lived on my own and um, I mean, I had a roommate, but I wasn't living at my parents' house and I lived in the house in the middle of the woods. And I watched it at an, on a night when my, my roommate was either, I don't know, she might've been seeing her partner or maybe she was working. I can't remember, but I watched it by myself in the dark in a house in the middle of the woods. And I, I don't think I will ever forget just how scared that movie made me because I, I'm not, I like, I, we just talked about this on the live. Like, I'm not somebody that's like, oh, I'm there. I never get scared. That's not true. I get scared plenty. But there's a difference between being scared and then the movie goes off and you like move on, right? Versus yeah. something that like you can't Six. shake it. Yeah. And um, this was the first movie that ever did that to me. And it was the first, obviously, it's not the first found footage film ever, but it was the first found footage film I had ever seen. I had never seen a film done that way before. And mm -hmm. um you know, it would go on to be the reason that I saw uh, Cloverfield and then Paranormal Activity. And then it's a huge reason I'm as into found footage now, obviously, you know, as I am. I mean, um, but I just genuinely, there has never been another movie, you know, that I watched that I was fucking scared afterwards like that. Never. Yeah. There's an alien movie that came close because you know how I feel about aliens are scary. Mm -hmm. But this was like, mind shattering scary like i couldn't shake it and i that was like it like the beginning of the smartphone time when i first saw it and so yeah. there wasn't a lot of like let me just google this you know what i mean it was like the very beginning of all of that and so there wasn't a lot of information for me to look up because i had to look up if it was real or not cuz i didn't know i wasn't a yeah. part of the the marketing stuff you know cuz i was too young and um and yeah, it just it just scared me so bad. And I I to this day, like I'm just so impressed with it and amazed with what they did. I feel for what those people went through to make that damn movie because they went through a lot. Heather went through a lot. And um and it just influences so many things, not just me and like my love for the subgenre, but like I mean, how many found footage movies have we seen that are definitely you know, piggybacking off the idea of the Blair Witch uh, project. Yeah. And so it's just, I think it's influential as a whole, but for me personally, I mean, it's the only thing that's ever made me that scared and it created, you know, it was that little seed planting of um, my love for found footage as a subgenre. I really do need to rewatch it because I actually saw it not too long after it came out. I was in like, I think I was in like sixth or seventh grade. And no one of my way. friends was like, oh, you have to watch this movie. Here, Aren't we the you same age? Mine. Huh? Aren't we the same age? I'm a little bit older than you, I think. Oh. I what year did it age. come out? 99. So, yeah, so I was like 12. So I Okay, I was I was 11. So I but I was still in I was still in middle school. Or I was in middle yeah. school. So I was in no. like No, I wasn't. I was in elementary grade. school. My bad. Yeah, I was in like 7th grade when I saw it. Okay, so you were middle um, school. But yeah. At that point, like, I also, like, I had seen our big movies when I was a kid. We were on the uh, I Still Know What You Did Last Summer bus. 
and yeah. the craft. Those were oh, our yeah. two. <laughs> our little yeah, that was our team. Movies. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, yep. So we would watch those every time we had a sleepover, and that was really the only exposure I'd kind of had at that point. Mm-hmm. So I, at the time, like had no sense of like you know this being something totally different and you know we didn't have cable or anything so you know all we saw was like trailers for other movies at the beginning of a vhs so you know i didn't know anything about any of the hype for it but i did watch it at night by myself and it was storming so (laughs) um a decision i seriously Uh, regretted at the time Yep, um, I feel that. I toughed, out. I, I toughed it out. Um, 12, 13 year old Tasha was tougher than I am now. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I would be curious now, like, with as much as I have consumed and know about horror at this point, like, yeah, because, you know, I'm an expert now. Um, what, yes. Yeah. So, true. <laughs> um, how it would feel now versus because it mostly what stuck with me from it was just like the feelings like there aren't a lot of things about the movie specifically where I'm like this scene no um, I know what you mean yeah so yeah I would uh I need to do that I need to bump that up on my on my watch list um, yeah I uh I'd be curious how you feel about it. I will say it's to me as an adult it's not as scary Mm. Um, because you start to realize that like, there's not really anything happening. Like it's, there's nothing that happens. And then like, there's only a couple times where they actually have any activity. Mm. And it's like, so when you realize that, I think when you're watching it, you know, in your thirties, you're just kind of like, yeah, I still love it, but like, it just doesn't hit the same and it's not as, um, but I think the overall feeling of anxiety is still kind of there. And that's the thing that they did really well was the building of the tension, the making you feel anxious, the making you feel isolated, the making you feel lost. Like to me, that's not easy to do. I don't watch all kinds of things and just everything make me feel that way. Like yeah. it's hard to make someone in the comfort of their bed or their couch or whatever feel like they're in danger and they're never going to escape it. And I think that's something that they did really, really well. Um, hmm. So yeah, I'd be curious what you think about rewatching it now. Yeah. And I mean, I'm still, even though I'm where I'm at now versus like when we did my five <laughs> influential. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've watched so much more and I have kind of gotten to where I'm desensitized to some things that I wasn't at that point. Yeah. Um, but I do still, I am a master at getting into my own head. Um, and once, yeah, once that happens, it just starts the snowballing. Um, but I also, I love camping and I've been backpacking and I like doing these things. So, you know, having been out in, you know, the middle of Grand Teton National Park in a tent and, you know, there's bears out there. Yeah. <laughs> everything else, like how easy it is to turn like the tiniest of sounds into, oh, yeah. shit. Hmm. So I think that yeah. uh, from my side, I know you're not super outdoorsy and stuff. So um, no, no. <laughs> I don't know what like type of princess that makes me, but whatever it is, I'm that the inside princess. I like being <laughs> inside. We've come a long way. We don't need to be going back nowhere. <laughs> I used to go camping all the time as a kid, but it was like really more like glamping because we had like a camper and we had TV and yeah. you know what I mean. But yeah, no, I, I don't do camping. I don't really like being outside at all. I don't I hate it. But anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so that I think is something that contributes to me and why some things that I think it's easier, like Scott's movie, you know, when you're, it's with you now. Throw that in the links. Um, Which is you know, a when it, movie. It is. And mm-hmm. when they're out walking around, like still mm-hmm. secondhand, you know, knowing that, this is my friend out there with his phone, like doing his <laughs> badass things. Like yeah. still you hear noises and it's like, mm. shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. Scott. See, <laughs> and that's probably like, well, I don't like being outside because it's uncomfortable, but that definitely would probably play into my lack of enthusiasm for camping. I'm like, nope. everything's haunted. I'm not interested. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. 
Mm -mm. Hard pass. Words to live by. Everything's haunted. Hard pass. It is. Oh. It's true. There's been so much, so many bad things that have happened here. I just, everything's haunted. Everything. Right. All of it. What? Um, and next you have Saw. So uh -huh. not, not like quite the same thing. Cause I don't think Saw is particularly scary per se. Hi Journey. What you doing? Um, and so open to everything. As he always does. Say hi. I see. Can you say hi? No, it's like, no, I never saying hi to you. Yeah. Does he have two collars Anywho. on? Uh, yeah, so he's got an e-collar, and then he's got his regular one. Regular collar. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, Saw. So Saw is on the list because I have never, actually, I don't even know if, to divide now, I've, I've, this has even changed, but you know, like I saw is another example of one that I'll never forget the way it made me feel when I watched it. And I watched this one at home. I was, I didn't get to see this in theaters, um, but I watched it with my dad and um, he like gets up in the middle of it, like at the end of it, like right at the end and he leaves to go do something in the kitchen. I'm like, what, like for real right now, this is about to get for, this is about to get real. Where are you going? And he like disappeared. <laughs> And so there's the part where, you know, Tobin Bell gets up. That's like the big, oh, fuck moment of Saw. And uh, I literally melted off the couch into the floor. I was sh shook. Like, I, I just, I, 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 speechless, like, still speechless. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain the level of what the fuck I felt when that happened. But it was one of those things where, I just like, just like, you know, like at my TV in like in awe of the situation. And um, it's also like, it, you know, Kat touched on this the other night with Saw. Like it's always been known to be this like super gory thing. But in one and two, you really don't see a lot of the gore. It's really more um, psychological, just like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's really not that much gore in that movie. But we get into our heads and they present yeah. things in such a way that it makes us think that we're seeing a lot more than we actually are. And I think that Saul does this expertly because I remember, you know, watching it and talking about how gory it was, but it's not really, not really. Yeah. Like it's it, got it gives you know, that vibe. Like it just leaves yeah. you with that feeling. Mm -hmm. It's got some blood. I mean, it's rated R for language and content and the gore that it does have, but comparatively speaking, it's really not that bad. Not the first one, not really the second one either, oh. but huh just my dog killing me oh. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so it's it's on the list because of the way it made me feel i you know i how many times have i messaged you and talked about how movies were just like whatever like i just didn't care or they were kind of dull or boring it's because like and I, maybe it's because i am desensitized to some extent but it feels like it's really difficult for me to care about a story anymore and Saw is an example, as an extreme example of feeling a lot when you're watching something. And yeah. with this, with Saw in particular, like, I love the memory of, like, my dad being ADD and, like, getting up at the end of the film and going to do something. And and just the way it made me feel. And I remember just being able to tell my friends, like, oh, I saw the Saw movie. And it was crazy. And then, like, it just led into like one of the one of my favorite franchises i love the saw franchise the only film i'm not a fan of is spiral um but other than that i really am a big fan of the franchise and it was kind of the start of that but it just it, the way that it made me feel i just i don't think i've ever felt that from any other film the closest i've ever come to that feeling is probably the way i felt when i saw the others with nicole kidman oh yeah yeah because that was like, that's an insane twist, but it's not, that body's been there the whole fucking movie twist. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was yeah. like next level genius, genius. Oh, yeah. And the, the film was so low budget. He straight up was on the floor, like the whole time. Like there was really? no double. Yeah. There was no double. There was no like stunt person <laughs> to put there. Tobin Bell laid in the middle of that floor, the whole movie. <laughs> like, um, oh my God. And yeah, so 
it just the way things it made me feel and it's so hard for something to get me that good where i'm just like no fucking way you know yeah. and uh and yeah it's it's something that i look for all the time when i watch horror but it's not something that's easily achieved because a lot of stuff's so predictable now like i can predict so many things yeah. Um, we talked about that the other night too, when we were talking about Bloodborne, like I I was shocked that that was like the one movie that, because I was so used to like me coming in so much later than you, I was like, oh my God, I'm watching this movie or, you know, all the ones we watched together for found footage month. And you were like, I'm going to call this now. And I was like, shit, she's always right. (laughs) Yeah. And it's not, I'll be honest. That's not super fun because it's like. I don't want to be right. I like when I'm wrong. Like I actually, yeah. I predicted the ending of Barbarian. I predicted something totally different and I was wrong. Mm-hmm. And that was like the one positive of that movie. But it was like one of those things where I was like, oh shit. Okay. Like, because I'm not usually, because usually I. Can... Did you just say the one positive thing about Barbarian? Yeah. I didn't like Barbarian. How did I not know this? I don't really talk about it that often, I guess. I think I need a minute. (laughs) (laughs) I love that movie. I saw it in theaters twice. Dang, I I waited for it to stream. And then I called my, I called Kurt. You remember Curtis that we did the Texas Chainsaw episode with? He he called me and he was like, did you finish it? And he was, I was like, yeah. He's like, did you like it? I was like, no. He said, man, me either. He's like, everybody's freaking. He didn't like it either. He was we so we talked about it for a while, but yeah, no, I know, I know, I'm in the minority. I was more team. Uh, don't worry, darling. I felt like that was the movie everybody should have been talking about, not Barbarian. I watched it. It's so good. It's good. I, I love that. First of all, dazzled by Barbarian. I was not. I mean, did you at least think the tape measure was funny? I don't even remember that. What's that? What happens with the tape measure? It's what Justin Long is like trying to figure out the square footage and everything of the house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember getting mad that he like still tried to kill her to save himself. Oh, yeah. I was like, this motherfucker. (laughs) He learned nothing. (laughs) He learned nothing. He never does. That's why he's always that same character. I know. That's his heart. Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't as blown away with that one. But. I don't even remember where we were at now. You just you blew my brain so How do we hard. Get on the subject of barbarian. Oh, endings, um, not predicting endings. The yeah, one I pot, yeah, the one pot. I thought that I thought that Skarsgård was going to be. Um, what was my? I'm trying to remember what it was. I think my my prediction was going to be that Skarsgård was the son of the guy and the lady from the uh, beginning. And that he was behind it all, which I still yeah. think would have been a better ending. But they didn't go that way. And I was like confident, like hard. I was like, that's where this is going. And then it didn't. Yeah. I was like, okay, then. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, they killed him. I was like. Yeah, see, what? that was what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I kept wait. I was waiting on it. And then that happened. And I was like, or not. Yeah. And the trailer for that one, I don't know if you had seen the trailer, but they kind of set it up so that it looks like she's trying to get away from him. Yeah, and that's probably where that bug came from. It's smart uh, advertisement because you you felt like you watched a trailer for a different movie. Yeah, you, and that's that's how it should be. Like, you should see a trailer and be interested, but still walk away with no idea what you're about to see. I 100%. Do you know that the final trailer... I'm push the, button, push the, button. the final trailer for um, and it's kind of different because it's a monster movie. So like, really, what is there to spoil? But I was trying to show my son the trailer, the Godzilla and Kong trailer, because he was asking me if Mecca was in it because Mecca was in the last one. I'm like, no, baby, they're fighting. Last time they teamed up to fight uh, another Godzilla. This time they're teaming up to fight another Kong, basically. Um, and so I was trying to tell him that the new villain is another ape-looking creature. Uh, and so he's like, can I see? And I was like, yeah, let me find the trailer. The final trailer is three minutes long. It's way too much. And it shows the fight between Kong and the, I, God, I should know his name. I can't think of his name, but the, the bad eight that, they, that he fights. It almost looks like an orangutan, but I don't think he is. I think he's just like an orange one. Like he's got like a reddish color to his fuzz. Anyway, it shows 
Kong and Godzilla doing a bunch of shit. It shows them fighting something else. Like it show it shows him getting the hand. Like it, I was like, so what the fuck is happening? Like it should not be like that. No. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I still it's gonna take me a little while to come back from that. Sorry, to disappoint you. I just but you know, that's what you get for shit talking sky sharks. So <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh uh, yeah so saw so, like i i actually watched this when i started getting back and i was still on night shift and yeah. the girl that i was doing we called them two mans it was just her and i working overnights together and she was a huge horror fan so mm -hmm. she actually brought in like the entire saw collection like yeah well it wasn't the entire thing it was through like seven or eight I think. Yeah, they eventually stopped making them in those really cool cases. I have several of those. Yeah, and we we binged it so hard. Like, I feel like I I didn't do well at remembering things on night shift, anyways. Which I think there's like science behind that. Like, you're I mean, you're just not meant to yeah. stay up like that. So I feel like there are yeah. lots of movies that I saw and just don't remember. Mm -hmm. But I didn't retain a ton. But I am not a huge body horror fan. Yeah. I have a tough time with, especially when it gets like into more of like the torture porn kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, that kind of like gets hostile. tough for me. Yeah. Yeah. God. That's um, what hostile is. Hostile is is the by definition is torture porn. Yeah, absolutely. Um. So yeah, it's it's not one that I like. Go out of my way to rewatch. Um. But I know there are yeah. a lot of people that are very, I mean, because, you know, that's Cat's Valentine's Day every year. <laughs> God love her. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the people that do get sucked into it, it's, it seems like one of those uh, pretty, what's my word? Devoted, I guess. Yeah, I, I th yeah, I think people who are fans of the franchise aren't fans. Like, it's another example of one that I don't think there's really an in between. I mean, I think, I think that as far as love and hate, like, I don't think, but it seems like the people who are the fans that are like, yeah, I really love this franchise. They like, they they really love it. Like, and I'm I'm like that. Like, as long as honestly, as long as they keep making them, I'll watch them. Honestly, so I, yeah. I mean, I think they did a great job with uh, ten. Um, and there's just these moments, man, where like, there's like that moment in, um, uh, one of the last ones where Gordon, which is played by, oh no, what's his name from, uh, King, uh, uh, shit from Robin Hood and Princess Bride. What is his name? Harry Ellis. Thank you. So he plays Dr. Gordon in the first one, and then he comes back as like a helper later on. But there's this moment when he gets a character in particular, and he gets to say, game over. And I'm like a little kid in a candy store. Every time I get to that part of that movie, I'm like, yes! Like, it's so good, right? Because he got that. He heard, like, he was a part of the, like, he heard the first game oh, over gee. that we ever heard. And so going full circle and him standing in that same fucking door and being like game over and closing the door, his little stubbly leg is so great. Like it made me so hyped. Like I was, I'm like, when I rewatch these to get ready for X, I was sitting on my couch, like bouncing at that scene. I was like, come on, like, this is so good. I'm so here for it. And um, yeah. God, it's, it's just so good. But there's moments like that throughout all of them where you're just like, damn, that's good. I uh, I know I got a, I got some hate for this, but um, I got that same like super pumped like they're bringing it back around feeling with uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Oh yeah, I haven't actually seen it. Not for any reason. Not because yeah. I'm like, eh, not. There's literally no reason. I just haven't gotten to it. Like I've just never watched yeah. it. No, I am. Um, we watched the Ghostbuster movies all the time mm -hmm. when I was a kid. So, and yeah, I, I actually too. I took um, Alana to the theater with me. She and I went to see Afterlife together. So it was a fun experience to be able to. 
Yeah. Totally does. Um, yeah, she's probably I mean, turned apart my house by now. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I, I I need to see it because I want to see the new one too. Mm, yeah, I still need to see the new one. I'm super behind though. I haven't seen any of that. Yeah. Um. Okay. Martyrs is the other the other one that I haven't seen yet. Um, but it, it is on my list. Because as we discussed the other night, the French have problems. Yeah, and... dude. I don't know. I don't know how you're gonna feel about martyrs. Yeah. It's brutal. I've, it's I've br- heard that brutal. it is very, very yeah, difficult. It's, it's it's good though. So the thing is, like, okay. So for martyrs, the reason martyrs is on the list is because I've watched gory movies off and on, um, you know, my whole horror career and my life or whatever. But the thing is, is like, I've always been very, um, not super into gore, right? Martyrs kind of showed me that sometimes excessive gore and, and really just fucked up circumstances can make you feel things outside of disgust. And I was not prepared for the things that martyrs made me feel because there's, there's a lot of, um, a lot of bad, a lot of bad. And it's, and, um, and obviously like, well, you know me, you know, I don't watch stuff that's got like rape and, and, and things like that. And it's, it's not, it doesn't, it's nothing like that, but it's just the character that is the main, the main character. You become so attached to her that when bad things happen, it's like, Mm -hmm. it's happening to you too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I really always thought, you know, a lot of, and I know that Saw gets gory. I'm not arguing that it doesn't, but it's always been my exception to the rule as far as gore went. Cause I was like, I really don't like gore. I don't like body horror. I don't like, it's excessive. It's useless. It's nonsense, whatever. And then I watched Martyrs and it changed everything about the way I look at those. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still a lot of gory stuff I won't watch. I'll never watch Terrifier. I'll never watch Terrifier 2. I'll never watch Terrifier 3748. It's just not going to happen. Um, because I know that there's no point in it. And I just, I can't watch something like that. That's like, if if you go to tell me about a movie and all you can say is that it's over the top gory and that's all you got, I'm not interested. Yeah. Martyrs is an emotional fucking roller coaster. And it will make you, the highs are really high, but the lows are really low. And for a movie to be able to do that, to control my emotions at the level that martyrs did while still being excessively gory and kind of over the top. I was not prepared for that. Like, I mean, and when I tell you it doesn't waste time, it does not waste time. It jumps right into it and it just fucking goes. And it's, um, and the con and, and, and it's got such a great story. Um, there's some, there's some, some certain undertones to it that I thought were just really, really well done. Um, it's super, super well acted. It looks good, but it's painful to watch. Like it hurts because it's it's such an like I said, it's emotional. And I had never thought something that was that excessively gory could make me feel those things. And so it became a film that I couldn't stop talking about. I couldn't stop thinking about. Um, and it's it's an upgraded one on my list because. I hadn't at the time that I did my original five, I didn't, I had not seen this film. I just watched this a couple <laughs> years ago for influential horror, actually, ironically. And, um, and yeah, I just, I was not prepared to feel, feel those things. <laughs> and ironically, the one that you have immediately following this one is werewolves within, which is like <laughs> an absolute yeah. riot, like start to finish. Love yeah. that one so much. Balls, balls. That's my favorite part. When he's in the car and he's yelling, I love. You know what else is my favorite part? It's the part with that couple where they're like in the middle of a crisis and she says something. He goes, ha, That's a good one, babe. That shit cracks huh? me up. Their dynamic. Oh, and when she hits him with the truck. <laughs> Deceased. It's just. Um, it's so good. 
Yeah, so this one's this one is probably one that may be interchangeable depending on my mood. But the reason is, is because, as you know, I am not a super big advocate for horror comedies. I don't like comedy horror. I, It's usually so silly, not enough horror. But I, I, I had to had to watch this because I did this in a double feature of The Wolf of Snow Hollow with um, with Robert from Creepy and Geeky Podcast. And um, they're both poor. They're both comedies. Um, but this one, I was like, it'll be fine. I love werewolves. Like, let's just see. Right. I laughed so much and I was, it's, it's one of few horror comedies. Maybe the, maybe the closest I could compare it to as far as how it made me feel was like Shaun of the Dead. I love Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Um, I gave it to seven to piss you off, but I do really love that movie. And it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't expect comedy horrors to be that good, but this yeah. one, I fucking loved it. I love the story. I love the characters. I love the wolf concept. I love the reveal, although it I don't know that it's a super big reveal, but maybe the casting though. And it's just so fucking funny. Like I laughed so hard and it was kind of the first horror comedy uh, because I've always put Shaun of the Dead in like its own category, right? It's its own thing. Oh, it's um, yeah. But like this was the first horror comedy I've watched where I thought, okay, I can I can get behind this. You know what I mean? Like because I'm just so like, because, you know, technically Tales from the Crypt is, is horror comedy in a lot of ways. And, um, then there's, um, Creep Show and, you know, the, the less serious stuff that's not as dark, dark and heavy, although some of it's a little dark, but anyway, but Werewolves Within was the first comedy horror movie that I watched outside of Shaun of the Dead, where I was like, I can get behind this concept of like comedy horror. And the other thing that happened was when I was watching um, the Wolf of Snow Hollow. I think I'm saying that right. Um, yeah. Which is oh, also a comedy. But it took me like half the movie to get used to the comedy to where I could find it funny. Whereas mm. Werewolves Within had me immediately. Like immediately I was laughing my, my butt off. Like I was like, oh my God. Like the main character, he is such a riot. I love him so much. His reactions to stuff I feel like are like how I would react in the situations. Yeah. He's like, like there's like that one part where he's like trying to calm everybody down and they're just acting crazy. And he's like, or, you know, do whatever you want. Or he's so like <laughs> sarcastic, but he's not really trying to be funny. He's just being yeah. like, just reacting to the situation. And I'm like, if there were any, if, if there had ever been a horror character that was really me in the situation, it's probably him. Cause I would just be like, I don't care if you die or not, like whatever. <laughs> like it, but it was so funny. And it just connected with me so quickly. And I don't think that that's, that's happened with a horror comedy. Because even Shaun of the Dead, the first time I watched it, I didn't know it was going to be, I didn't know it was a comedy. So it took me time to get into a rhythm with it. Um, and then, of course, I now I love it and I laugh at everything because I get that it's supposed to be funny. But Werewolves yeah. Within, it was connected with me right away. And I, I don't know that I would have watched it if Robert hadn't said, hey, let's talk about this on a... My shirt moved. I thought someone was crawling on me. I was about to scream. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it, it's on the list because it has kind of changed the way I look at horror comedies. I'm like willing to give them chances now and before I wouldn't. Say like, especially with Shudder and stuff, there have been a lot of really good ones rolling out the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Like movies that I don't expect to find as funny as I do. Yeah. Um, like I love the scare package movies. Um, Deadstream, I thought was really good. Yeah. Like, there's just movies that, and you know, I love The Wolf of Snow Hollow. Like, I, oh, yeah, tend to have like that very dry, you know, that very dry, sarcastic. Yeah. It, the film humor. itself took me some time to get used to because it is a different type of humor, but it's very well done. And I got to tell yeah. you, the werewolf in it, for what it is, in, in yeah, um, I won't do a spoiler, but for the way that things come to be. Um, looked damn good. Like it is, yeah. an, it is an example of how to do like a werewolf creature, right? Yeah. And it's Absolutely. considering like it's not a CGI wolf. It's not like you know. Anyway, so yeah. yeah. You know what I would love to see of werewolves within? I would like to see like the clue version of that because all of the characters oh, are so quirky are very. Yep. And they're you know they're like their own little important pieces in a way. Mm -hmm. 
And you actually like, yeah. in some way, shape or form, kind of care about everybody yeah. by the time it's all said and done. And yeah, I think that would be like a great board game. I think, um, yeah, because I think it's very, it's very much modeled after that because they don't know who it is or what's going on. They don't know who the wolf yeah. is. They don't know if it's somebody in their group. They don't know if it's somebody on the outside watching them. They don't know. So it, it, yeah, I mean, I think you hit it. Yeah, that's, that's a perfect way to explain. I think, I think it had to have been influenced by Clue, which is one yeah. of my favorite Tim Curry movies, by the way. Yeah. That shit is hilarious. That is such a that's fun movie. Friend. It is it's fun. so I like dumb. It. I love it so much, though. And everybody yeah. says either it or um, Rocky Horror, but no, my favorite Tim Curry movie is Clue. He's hilarious in that. Ugh, he is. He's a riot in general. I love him. I mean, I know a lot of people are like, oh, he doesn't get enough love, but like, he really doesn't. <laughs> yeah, no, he's great. He's great. I totally agree. Man, from martyrs to werewolves within. That was really a. An emotional those roller coaster. Two, and I haven't even... ones. Yeah. Yeah, I was definitely expecting to see Poltergeist on that list. Um, so that was why I was surprised. But I should sit down. I, I'm trying to remember what I'd have to go back and watch my I know I had signs. Midsummer unhinged. unhinged. Huh? You had Midsummer. Oh yeah. Uh the mist. The mist and yeah. What was the other one? I don't know. Something I had seen before. I don't think it was one I had to rewatch. Yeah, I don't remember. I feel bad. The um, Horror Fiend is live. Okay. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh. Yep. It's Thursday. If they're not recording on Thursdays, they're going live. I was going to look really quick and see what it was because that's going to be really loud. Sorry. Um. Um, but yeah, I when I did my original list, it was Saw, The Blair Witch, Scream, Frankenstein, and um, nuts. What was the other one? I can't remember what it was. I remember four of your five. I just can't remember all of it. Yeah, I can't either. But I mean, damn, that was two years ago. It's the mist. Yeah, which is bananas to to even fucking mm. think about. Oh, no. Actually, uh. A little over because it was actually October of 21. Yeah, and so then it didn't release. It released after oh, the fact. I... There we go. Sorry, I was trying to pull up the thing. Okay. Midsummer Paranormal Activity. Oh. Okay. So it was it was it it was uh signs, paranormal activity, unhinged, midsummer, and the mist. Okay. I did not remember it being paranormal activity. I definitely did not either. <laughs> look at us. Duh, look at the babies. I know my green screen in the back that I didn't use. I just wanted it to hide the messy room behind me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Today that's, on Secret Reveal. That's funny. <laughs> that is funny. I was that like scrambling funny. to try to find enough books to put underneath my laptop on my TV tray to uh Yeah, we talked we talked a lot like leading up to that too because yeah, I think you were like, it, you hadn't really done anything on YouTube yet, right? That was oh, it. I hadn't done anything. No, not at all. That was my first foray into yeah. the YouTube. -ing. Dang, I was trying to find my original, but it has gotten lost in the mix. So it's a good problem mm -hmm. to have. Yeah, there's a lot of videos. Uh, we're over 500. I just remember you celebrating your 50th subscriber. Dude, I know I had wine and everything. It was official. Yeah, you did. Popping that bottle. And now we're at almost, uh, not quite, but almost halfway to 900. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, I think if we really grind, we could probably get, we could probably be monetized this year. It's going to take some effort, but I think we can get there. There's four new to. shows coming out. Summer's going to be amped up with lives and there'll be a lot going on. So. Yeah. Um, you got this. But, yeah. Speaking of new shows, well, it's not really new; it's returning. Um, the OG fans will remember when I tried to do podcast and it wasn't worth the extra stress. Um, Natasha and I used to do a show <clears throat> called Horror Bestie Breakdowns, where we would watch a movie and we would break it down and we would talk about it. And so we are going to bring that back um, yeah, with the caveat of it being a funny one. So it'll be like bad funny. Not like bad unbearable, but like so bad it was humorous and entertaining. 
you know, like sky sharks, like sky sharks, and um, <laughs> rotten tail, and rotten tail. Yeah. So we've got a list of movies we're gathering, and uh, we're going to go through some some bad horror movies and laugh about them and and talk about them, and it'll be the same. It's going to be called the same thing, but it'll just be it'll it won't be so like when we did it before, it was a mix of things. It wasn't just funny stuff. We we did like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre when that one came out. We did Tragedy Girls. We did a, a bunch of stuff. And um, shows. all of yeah. us are dead. I have anyone. God, that was a long episode. It was so hard to cover all of that shit. Eight Ugh. episodes. But it was so good, though. It was so it was it was fun to talk about, though, because it was a great show. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we'll be bringing horror bestie breakdown back. It'll just be with a uh, funny mm -hmm. horror movies instead of just any yep. like a mix of stuff. It'll be more focused on those kind of things. So torturing each other. Yeah, that's right. We're going to do a uh, Velocipaster. Uh, we're going to do, uh, what was the uh, Easter Bloody Easter? Um, the Sand. Oh my God, I, I am particularly excited about. Um, oh, no. look that one up. I can't remember what other ones are on there, but anyway, but you get the idea. So we should Stay do Puppet tender. Shark and have Cat on. <laughs> yes, we should. I haven't seen the movie, I've only read her book. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I watched the movie as I was editing so that I had like some kind of context oh, for fun. it. Oh, I watched gosh. the trailer for it because I was like, I need at least a visual before I read this. <laughs> yeah. Because I blurbed it. So I needed to, I was like, I, you know, I, I read it without any context really. I mean, I got a little ways into it and I was like, okay, let me see if I can find the trailer real quick. And I watched the trailer for it. <laughs> Worth it. Yeah. So, well, sweet. Cool. Yay. Now we just got to do Steve's. Yes, you do. Dun, yeah, dun, dun. Yep. Yeah, I think the next one I've got is, uh, let's see. Oh, Radar is my next scheduled one to record. Oh, sweet. Yep. So, Still Radar. I told him I would uh, give him a discount on future editing projects if he sends me Wear Walrus. No shit. He was like, deal. <laughs> I, w I wonder if he knows, like, like how what people think of like what people think of when they think of him or like what people come across where they think of him because like when we did the when we when Steve and I reached 600 last year we did a viewer's choice where like we did a giveaway for four spots for people to pick the episode they can pick the topic and the host and mm -hmm. um and so Norin picked hot takes as an episode and I asked him recently because we're finally scheduling those we're kind of behind but we're scheduling those and he was like uh, I was like who do you want to host like do you have like a you know an opinion or did you want to be like what do you, what do you want to do and he was like yeah he was like you know I think it'll be a really good one for that radar <laughs> And boy, was he right. Because Radar has been messaging me some of his opinions. And I'm like, oh, we're going to be canceled. <laughs> He's got such He's so funny. Opinions. And he is. He's so passionate about his he, opinions. Yes. Like, he knows where he stands. He's just. You can always tell how it. passionate by how high his hands are. You ever notice that? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> his hands will gradually get more intense as he's talking about things that he's passionate about. Anyway, yeah, but yeah. Um, Ernie's losing his shit in the backyard, so I uh, need to go see. Yeah, the no, neighbor kids it. walk but through my yard sometimes, and he like, oh yeah, and I, I don't think his e collar is working. We'll wrap this up. Uh, thanks for co-hosting, or I mean, thanks for hosting. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for uh, being my hostie. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. no> <laughs> Is that how that works? <laughs> sure, why not? Um, all right, well, that's going to wrap uh, up this episode of Five Influential Horror. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Have a good rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you in the next one.